Yo, good morning. I'm just gonna backpack this off of that uh, visa situation in Cambodia and just take a second to really enjoy life. Because you know, yesterday was a real stressful day from that story. And, you know, I'm just glad I can do what I can do. You know, it's really weird because obviously, like, I have my introduction story that I'm not gonna go over because I don't need to. If you go back far enough, you'll know it. If you look around, you'll find it. But it's just, it's real interesting at how sometimes, like, really small decisions that you don't think of in the moment really have, like, a long-term cascading effect to put you at a 7-Eleven in Bangkok. Let's go. We're going to get some chicken. And we're going to continue this conversation because I don't want to be moopy. I just want to get some chicken and continue appreciating life because life is good in downtown Bangkok. And it could be so much different. But, you know, making decisions early that are good for you can be good for you later. And if you know, you know. And if you don't, look it up. I'll be right back. I'm going to get some chicken. Uh, and realistically, a lot of it just comes down to the fact that with my first job, it really uh, forced me to operate under pressure become self-reliant, learn to live by myself in a foreign country. I don't know, you know, it's one of those like, it's just, it's crazy to think that my life is the, bless you, that my life is the way it is. Because I, I, I feel like I didn't do much to get here, but I know I did a lot. But it's because like I just kind of felt like I was doing what was necessary to survive and get me to today. And it was like along the way, don't make too many emotional decisions. Whenever a situation presents itself, you know, you usually stop, take a breather, and then think through the situation. And then you get through it. If you make less emotional decisions and make more smarter decisions things will like keep happening for you because I, I don't want to compare life to chess, but it's kind of one of those like, you know, the first couple of moves in chess are the cookie cutter moves, you know, like you either try and do the three move checkmate or you move your pawns and knights into like a defensive position or offensive or however you want to play chess. And then you go from there. And that's basically what happened with me. It's like, I feel like chess was being played around me as a kid. And then once I got to that age around like 15, 16 or so, and I got in trouble, I was like, oh snap, okay. I lost my bishop or whatever, you know, chess analogy. So now I got to figure out how to do this with the rest of my pieces. And somehow, <coughs> after getting kicked out of school at 15, I'm here in Bangkok at 32. It's just, it's crazy. That's all it is, it's really crazy. Because, I don't know if I told y'all, but uh, like earlier this month, July 11th, I think. Yeah, well, July 11th was the last day I was a civilian ever, 2010. So my first day of like my longest career was July 12th, 2010. So now it's been 14 years since I basically took that job. And uh, it's crazy to see this is where that job took me in 14 years. Just chilling in Bangkok, basically partying every other night and having to deal with problems that arise. Because yesterday, you know, after you reflect on the situation, you realize like you're literally in the middle of nowhere, Cambodia slash Thailand, because you're in between two countries. So you're in the middle of nowhere, Thailand slash Cambodia, you know, two of the poorest countries in the world. 
you look like you might have $20 on you. You might not, but you look like you might have $20 on you. So you're in the middle of nowhere, in between two countries, and someone asks you for $20. Well, if it was $20 for sure. Obviously, in yesterday's situation, they wanted 100 But, like I was saying, if someone comes up to you and wants $100 to fix the situation, and you're in between two countries, and you look like you got some money, I don't want this part of the rant to be in it, but it'll be in it anyway. You just pay a little bit of money. Like, people make such a big deal out of extortion and all this stuff. I get when the amount is an exuberant amount. We're talking like 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Of course, like that's extortion for sure. But, you know, like a cop pulls you over, you're stuck in between two borders, and an official law enforcement officer is asking you for like 20 to $50 and you know you're kind of doing something wrong, maybe you're not doing something wrong, but like borderline, sure, you know? Like, just give the dude 10, $20 and he'll go away. Cause he doesn't want to feed his family. It's not, these people aren't bad people. Like they're not, especially these like officials at like border patrols and police officers and stuff. Again, like I said a minute ago, there are the bad apples. But for the most part, if homeboy wants some money, like I said, with keeping cool under pressure at my old job and just like, you know, keeping your cool under pressure, being in high pressure situations over and over again, because I'm a little biased. I have been traveling now for five or six years because I actually started traveling right before COVID and then COVID hit and because of my lifestyle, I got to continue traveling through COVID while all y'all st stayed at home. You can look it up all the way to my first video. It started during COVID. Your boy was in Mexico. Uh, but yeah, so I've been traveling for like six or seven years. So I've been extorted 10, 12, 15 times. I don't know. It's, at this point, it's basically like an annual, an annual conversation. That's the best way to put it. That's why it doesn't surprise me when it happens anymore. It's like, oh, you wanted a hundred dollars to make this problem go away. Oh, do I want to pay a hundred dollars to make this problem go away, or do I want to take a second, breathe, <sighs> barter? Look, if you, if you want some money, I'll give you some money, but we gotta talk. Same with these local markets. I think I showed it to you in one of my earlier videos when I first got to Thailand. If I didn't, too bad. You can also just look at my social media and it'll tell you it's there too. But it's, it's a, the only country that basically doesn't barter is America. But now we're becoming more of a barter country. So when you're out here and anyone tries to do anything for you, official or not, barter. If someone official is telling you something and they want money, barter or take a second, take a deep breath and do some research to make sure that they're not trying to, because maybe, maybe he's just is trying to charge you the right amount. Because I know we paid like 50 or $60 for a visa to get back into Thailand when we were in South Korea. We hit our six months, we paid the $50 each, we got our visa in South Korea to come back to Thailand. So this whole conversation might not even be true. That might not even been extortion. That might have just been the visa fee. And homeboy just, again, middle of nowhere, Thailand and Cambodia. Maybe homeboy got lost in translation. And when he said 10K, he meant 10K for both. Even though that wouldn't have made sense because we only paid five. Yeah, he wanted five and five. So he was basically just trying to charge us double so he could feed his family. Whatever. Swadika. That's why I'm not stressing about it. Everybody just trying to eat. Just like I'm trying to eat.
Thank you for learning on how to deal with extortion today, I guess. I don't know. Last night was fun. I got my chicken and my coffee. Whenever I get chicken, you know that's code word for I drank last night. Whew. But you get 60 days when you get back to Thailand, even if you've been here for six months. So that's always good news. Thanks. Like and subscribe. I'll catch y'all next time.